Kia ora, Jelsa Ann, welcome. Ko Kei Webster Taka Wingua. My name's Kay Webster and I'm one of the priests here at Wellington Cathedral of St Paul. What a pleasure it is to be joining with you today as we gather for morning prayer. We've got the opportunity for some silence and stillness, an opportunity to pray, to sit in silence, to hear God's word, and to invite God to transform us on this day and this week. We are going to be utilising today from a New Zealand prayer book, uh, the service of daily devotion for Monday that can be found on page 109. If you don't have a prayer book with you, feel free to just sit, to just listen, to let God's word wash over you and to pray with us as we join together in this uh, community that forms on the internet. Hallowed be your name on earth as in heaven. Ki e tapu tu ungoa, ki runga ki te whenua, ki a riti anō ki tō tarangi. Always be joyful. Pray continually, give thanks whatever happens. Hear Jesus' words. When you do a kindness, hide from your left hand what your right hand is doing. Your good deed must be done in secret. When you pray, pray privately, alone. When you fast, do not make a show of it. Do not do it to be seen. For your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Would any of you who are parents give your child a wetter when they ask for a fish? Bad as you are, you know what to give your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give to those who ask? Believe what Jesus says. God is generous. God is good. Let's spend some time in silence as we reflect on this Gospel reflection. and a reflection on the epistles, the letters, and the New Testament. Etifano, let us love one another because God is love. We love because God first loves us, and everyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. We do not love the people we have se sorry, if we do not love the people whom we have seen, it cannot be that we love God whom we have not seen. God is love, and those who dwell in love are dwelling in God, and God in them. We're about to hear a reading from uh, Paul's letter to the church in Galatia. I chose this particular spot at our cathedral uh, to pray. I'm sitting uh, near to the high altar, I've chosen the docile curtain that you can see, but I've chosen this particular prayer, prayer desk. Uh, there are 10 prayer desks around the, whole, around the altar, traditionally sat in by archdeacons and canons in the stasis, but each of those uh, have an embroidered cushion, uh, and the prayer desk that I am seated at has the cushion that remembers Galatia. I'd love to show it to you, but uh, that would be a very wobbly thing to do at this stage. But here we have Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, the people that have not been forgotten, and Paul's letter that we are still reading and rereading 20 centuries later. So we're picking up in Galatians 3, beginning at verse 23, and we're going to read into the first section of chapter 4. Now faith, now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the Lord was, the law was our disciplinarian 
until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptised in Christ have clothed yourselves in Christ. There is no longer Jew nor Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs, according to the promise. My point is this. Heirs, as long as you are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of the property, but they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the father. So with us, while we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then an heir also through God. Neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, and we are heirs in God's kingdom. Let us sit in silence and we invite the word of God, the spirit of God, to speak deeply into our lives. Let us spend some time in intercession. Here we are on the first Monday in Lent. Loving God, seeking to put something down or to pick something up in this season of sacrifice. Loving God, poke at us, disturb us, interrupt us so that we can see what it is that you are calling us to do and who you are calling us to be. Loving God, I have, I have pondered whether or not I should put down social media and pick up a book or a board game. Loving God, I'm alert to the fact that this cathedral, which is so quiet in this moment, has been so noisy for much of the past month. with the protesters who came to Parliament and who surrounded this cathedral. We pray for those who have protested and have now dispersed. We pray for those who are police, who are politicians, who are protesters. Loving God, we pray for those who were unhappy on Wednesday morning and are still unhappy today.
We pray for those who feel that they have had their, dim their mana diminished. We pray for those who have lost their jobs because of COVID lockdowns, because of a mandate, because of the disruptions in Wellington. We pray for those who have worked so hard and who are working so hard in healthcare. We pray for strength beyond their own imagining for the weeks and for the months to come. And we pray beyond our own context. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Tonga. We continue to weep as we pray for those in the Ukraine. For the children who have been born in subways. For the families who are separated. for those who are defending their loved ones and their homeland. Loving God, we say, may your kingdom come. May your grace be upon them. May peace dwell in that land and in every land. Oh, loving God, hear the cry of our hearts. And finally, we pray for ourselves and for our ministries. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Returning to our prayer books. Our Father, hallowed be your name on earth as in heaven. Eto matua, ki a tapu tūngua, ki runga ki te whenua, ki a riti ano ki tōtarangi. Holy One, Holy and Eternal, awesome, exciting and delightful in your holiness. Make us pure in heart to see you. Make us merciful to receive your kindness and to share your love with all at your human family. Then will your name be hallowed on earth as in heaven. Lord God, when you give us, your servants, any great matter to do, Grant us also to know that it is not the beginning but the continuing of it until it is thoroughly finished which yields the true glory. God of work and rest and pleasure, grant that what we do this week may be an offering rather than a burden and for those we serve may it be the help they need. Amen. We haven't quite got to the end of Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, but he finishes it with the words, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Kakiti anō.